Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria has observed that Nigeria is the largest importer of the United States hard red and white wheat worth about 635 billion naira annually. It is also the world's second importer of rice at 356 billion naira and 217 billion naira is spent on sugar and 97 billion naira on fish. Now, all this make up the about one trillion naira which is spent annually on food import. And this is obviously a sharp contradiction to the notion that Nigeria is blessed with about 82 million hectares out of the country's total land area of about 91 million hectares and has been found to be arable. So, how can these be converted to food security, employment, and economic boom? Perhaps one way is the latest move by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, which is exportation of one of the country's many crops, yam. Well, let's talk food security and economic recovery on this episode of Big Story. I'm Ini John Mekwa. Yam production in Benue, Oyo, Nasarawa, Sokoto, Abia, Anambra, Delta, Edo, Enugu, Eboi, Niger, Taraba, Oshun, and Plateau states has placed Nigeria at the top of the list of world producers of yam. The Food and Agricultural Organization reports that in 1985, Nigeria produced 18.3 million tons of yam from 1.5 million hectares, representing 73.8% of total yam production in Africa. According to 2008 figures, yam production in Nigeria has nearly doubled since 1985, with Nigeria producing 35.17 million metric tons with value equivalent to over $5.65 billion. As a tuber, yam blows on more during the rainy season, which typically runs from April to October in Nigeria. They are harvested at the end of the rainy season or early part of the dry season, which coincides with the end of vegetative growth. Yams for long-term storage for marketing a seed are usually harvested during the Hamatan period, which is December to January in many parts of southeastern Nigeria, when the crops have attained maximum growth and maturity. The crop receives so much attention for some obvious reasons. For instance, it's a good source of energy and each 100 grams contains 118 calories. It's mainly composed of complex carbohydrates and soluble fiber. It provides around 20% of the required vitamin C in the body by 100 grams. It is a rich source of minerals like copper, potassium and iron. The crop has also been used to replace imported flour to a large extent in the production of bread and cakes. Outside Nigeria, some industries, particularly in Europe, use yam flour in preparation of high-quality biscuits, bread, cakes and others. Yam chips and pellets can also play the same function as cassava chips and pellets in production of livestock feeds. Apart from serving as food, it has a lot of industrial uses, such as the starch, which is used in production of all-purpose adhesives. The adhesives are used by producers of cartons, packaging companies, and leather and shoe producers as well. The all-purpose adhesive is produced with yam or cassava starch. Although it is already on record that Nigeria supply about 70% of yam consumed in the world, the federal government intends to increase this market share with its latest focus on exportation of the crop. For us to go abroad and not find Nigerian yams in the market is an embarrassment. And for those who may think that this is not anything significant, we want to assure you it is. Because Ghana is targeting $4 billion a year from yams in the next three, four years. And if they can do that, we who are the masters of yam production have no business lagging behind. Um, we don't even consume all the yams we produce here because most of it is lost to wastages because of poor technologies in preservation. We're working on that. We're going to use solar coolers in yam markets and yam producing areas 
to keep the yam temperature at 14 degrees Celsius, not frozen, but to keep it at that temperature so it can be good all year round and can last two, three years um, in the containers. So essentially, we're making this point because we're diversifying the economy. We're talking about uh, economic recovery and growth. And we will have to export whatever is needed from Nigeria by other countries so we can earn more foreign exchange rather than expend everything we have on importation. And so the onus is on states like Benue, which has the potential to fill a large gap in production. Individuals like the governor, Samuel Otomo, says he has never stopped being a farmer, has promised to live up to expectation. I've been a farmer since uh, 1992. Hmm. And uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, and I feel satisfied any time I eat from the product of my farm as a farmer. And one thing that I know is that um, we have comparative advantage in agriculture in Benue State. And one thing that I've been trying to teach my people, even when you don't have money, at least you have something to eat. You'll be satisfied. You can take care of your friends, you can take care of your family, and you'll be satisfied. And I know that God has given us the greater portion. Every part of this country, God has endowed them with something. In the south side, we have the oil. In the north central here, we have the food. But he looks beyond yam production and speaks on agriculture as a whole. For commercial agriculture, equipment must come in. And the farmers may not have the capacity the government has. We can guarantee loans for them. But now, as I talk to you, the windows that are created by Central Bank, Bank of Agriculture, Bank of Industry, and then Benway State Government support to those who are interested in going into farming uh, is really yielding results. The production rate has increased as we witnessed uh, during time this, the, the, this year. He proposes some policies which he says have been benefiting in Benue State. What we are doing currently uh, during cropping period and during harvesting, it's not a year-round program. For instance, for the cropping season, we start from June to August. We allow people to go back to farm on Fridays. Uh, then, during harvesting, we start from November to January. We allow people to uh, take off on Friday, work-free day for them. And uh, the results has been wonderful. Every civil servant who heeded to our call to go back to farm have something to put on the table. But, but what do you put in place to regulate? Because we know some people want to take it for granted. So they won't go to the farm, but they use it to do maybe other things. So what do you do to regulate the activities of that Friday? Well, you see, the, you can't expect 100% uh, success of such a program. You don't need 100% success. If you achieve 70%, you have met your target. And I think that is what... We have done, but I assure you that majority of the people went, they came back with good news and uh, after harvesting, a lot of them came telling me that this is what we have made from our farm due to your policy. And I think we're on the right track.